Hey dudes, how's it going? It's your boy K Randis here, and uh, <laughs> um, what happened here was in the second part of this video during the Manchon rotation, uh, the audio is a little bit busted because Windows Update fucked my settings, and I hit record and recorded it, and I'm not gonna do a do over, so I'll just do a voiceover, unfortunately, about the rotations. Um, and yeah, so like this is mostly just about rotations for the uh, mana pot for the MP regeneration or the resource potion. Uh, the infinite resource potion, just the rotations that I did for the pieces. Um, so we're going to start off with Shira Ruins here instead of Manchums now. Um, Shira Ruins here is actually like probably one of the easiest ones to get. Uh, it's actually just want to grind like the right side here. Um, Shira Ruins, I sort of divided it into three sections. Um, so three sections here. It's very quick here. I just want to go over that. There's this uh, western side over here. Like this entire circular area here should encompass about one person and then on like the the eastern side over here i use the node as sort of like the divider between the areas and then this eastern side here is just mostly like all trash loot or whatever and whatnot and just like this sort of bottom west side is just uh is just the a small amount of mobs and then there's the south side over here the south side is like just the bottom here is literally all these large grove keepers in the bottom here um these guys all drop the piece as well, but the best spot you want to do is the western side here. This little western side here has the greatest amount of like mobs uh, kill rate per second or whatever to get the Mark Thannon's gland. And then if it's if it's occupied, then you probably just want to like go to the south here or contest the person, whichever. I mean, that's always an option. But I'm just saying like if you don't really want to contest and not waste time or buffs or whatever or event time, the southern section is the next best thing. And then afterwards, if that's also occupied, then it's just this like place over here and then swap channel or whatever. We'll find another open rotation. But um, sure ruins uh, for this piece. Like you'll notice like how many of these like keeper mobs there are here. It's all these big looking mob dudes that drop the piece. So vine keeper, leaf keeper drops it. Like I said, you just go through the western side here. Look how many there are you, it, per hour. You can probably get like a hundred rolls for the item per hour or something like that easily. Um, I mean, no, per rotation, not per hour, per rotation. So you can get like a shitload of rolls, like just using uh, a fast class that can probably eliminate these mobs. I did this with the Succession Maywa, and I think I rolled it on my Succession Maywa as I was just like plowing through the mobs here. And then you just go down south, you know, just run through the trees. It's literally just a circle, like through the swamps here, and then like just cut through here. There's even more in here in here as well if you got a super high ap tamer you could probably just ride a doom horse and just like roaring through them as succession and they'll just like erase themselves and that's pretty much it so like once you're about here you just go circular go up you'll still notice that there's still a lot of gate leaf keepers around uh once you get to this northern side it sort of starts thinning out a little bit but then you just go north a bit more there's another chunk of like keepers here and then you start turning left right about here and it's a, you might get a little bit lost, but once you get used to it after a few rotations, then uh, this is pretty much the place that you want to be in. And then you go back into this dense area. So it's I sort of screwed up that circle, but it is a circle. So it's again, it's like a weird time zone area right now, or like time at night is 1:46 a.m. So it's kind of hard to spot stuff right now. So the northern part here is a little bit more sparse, but if you're overkilling, then you go back that way. So that's pretty much it. It's very simple rotation, a high amount of like targeted mob kills, uh, kill rate per hour. I don't really remember what the trash is. I don't care because I don't grind trash per hour unless the place is total aids and I'm trying to min max the efficiency to lower my downtime in some of these places. But to me, Shira Ruins grind was like, to me it was like, it was enjoyable because there's so many targeted mobs that can drop the mobs, unlike Manchums. Manchums, there's literally only like 38 shamans or something in the entire place. The second rotation is these uh, Grove Keepers in the southern side over here. So on the southern side, you'll see these like enormous looking weird tree looking dudes somewhere over here. Um, that's the other rotation. Uh, it's kind of sparse, but all of them do drop the piece. It's these big dudes right here, all these Grove Keepers, they all have a chance to drop the piece for you. So you can also just plow through this area if that western side's occupied. Um, it's not as dense or high kill rate as that western side there, but it is an acceptable amount of kills like per rotation or whatever per hour. Um, it's still a very high amount of like headcounts here. I don't remember what it is because there's so many that it's just to me it's good enough. It gets the job done. It's what you're looking for if that's what you're grinding here for. 
and those are the two rotations I highly recommend if you're going after this Mark Thannon's gland. Um, the other rotation that I said on the eastern side, like you'll notice, like it's just a bunch of those, uh, those, those, uh, Bronx. I almost called them thonks and stonks, but yeah, those Bronx and the swamp callers. There's not too many of the keepers here. It's nowhere near as dense. Like there's one, and then there's like all these little shitter mobs. And your pets are going to be occupied picking up so much shitter trash that they might not even pick up the targeted mob trash. And you might just outrun them, which is why you want to go to those super dense areas on those sides. Alright, so that's Shira Ruins. Very easy. This is the uh, mansion uh, rotation part. Um, as total aids, I hate this place. Uh, this is a re-recording because the first time I recorded this uh, Windows update fucked my microphone settings. So instead of doing voiceover, actually just was like, there was too many things that I forgot that I went over. Um, I just want to go over that there's like two rotations in this area. Um, there's like an east and a western rotation. There's only about 38 shamans in this area. So this place and this piece is pretty awful for the infinite MP pot. This is probably the hardest piece out of all the pieces in my opinion just due to quantity and sheer drop roll attempts that you get per kill essentially. Um, trying to encompass all the areas is kind of stupid. Uh, I noticed that the rotations that I did was only about 2 minutes and 30 seconds, which is pretty much about the respawn timer of like the mob when you kill them. It's about 2 minutes to 2 minutes 30 seconds. They seem to be like on an RNG timer for whatever reason. I don't really know why. Um, so there's 16 mobs in the western side of the Manchon Forest and about 20 on the uh, on the eastern side. Um, I do it in two sections here. I've noticed a lot of people were running through the middle section and I'm always scratching my head what the hell are they doing. And they're kind of wandering aimlessly. Um, this one I actually had to min-max or freak show uh, do this. Um, generally if you are grinding this area and killing all the shamans on time, literally the rotations I did were so tight that it's kind of hard for anybody to kind of chaos your rotation because by the time you reach your rotation loop the thing respawns with like almost like three to four seconds just in front of you or whatever so the thing is almost practically alive in an infinite loop depending on your class you can probably increase or decrease this amount uh, but for most general classes i believe you should be able to manage this uh, the only exceptional classes here that would excel very well in just assassinating all the shamans in this area would be Musa, Meiwa, Nova, um, extreme agility mobility classes like that that don't really have to use too many skills for movement or they just have an extreme burst movement. Um, maybe even Succession Kuno, but honestly, um, it amounted to about 8,000 trash per hour. No Agris Fever, yellow loot scroll. Uh, it was a very detailed run, generally about three to four rows of um, Manchon Voodoo Dolls per run, uh, sometimes an earring, which is very, very rare. And I used 50 mil buffs for almost 65 hours, and I ta uh, tallied this to be uh, 50 mil every hour for 65 hours, and about 20 mil buffs for about 10 of those hours. And then there was some uncounted hours from beforehand, which was a uh, spell like anywhere from 75 to 95 hours is how long this took. There was like some unaccounted hours that I didn't count for, but it was a minimum of at least 75 counted hours. How I did this was with the family inventory, and what I did was just uh, set. Um, 40 scrolls here at a time and it did it in sets of 40 and like when I hit 40 scrolls like this hit zero I take a break because it's really really exhausting to do that amount of grind like over and over every day and just go nowhere considering I'm paying 50 mil buffs uh, it amounted to nearly 300,000 uh, trash uh, and it could be a lot worse than this as I've seen people get it at a lot worse rate at about 207 hours or like 400 hours um, this was all done on node level 10 for me as well with maximum drop rate buffs. About 20 of the 75 hours that I had here was with supreme old moon scrolls and J scrolls running per hour, like one one per hour. You can't run both of them per hour, so like 20 of those hours from all the events or whatever. It was an extreme drop rate with also a drop rate event buff and 50 mil tent uh, bonus drop rate buff so it's quite insane and it still took about 75 hours and honestly it's just rng i don't think that even helped too much but i'd like to believe it did and that's it so we're gonna go with the rotations now after that detailed explanation of my results um there's pretty much only two rotations here that should fit two users here otherwise you're gonna have to contest for a spot or, or you know 
uh, flag or whatever and whatnot. Um, this place is very annoying because there's so few little populations. I don't know why PA didn't make the Great Warrior drop it as well, but whatever. So this first rotation is the Western rotation. So it just starts at the Node Manager. I want to start it here because it's an easy point of reference. So this first first one here, I'll do a counter on the screen. And this is the second one. And then uh, sometimes if you overkill, you just kill these groups on the side as you're going through so that your pets have something to pick up. Um, this is how you sort of like basically maximize because you want to make sure your pets are always on their cooldown, uh, their pickup cooldown, which is like two seconds or two and a half seconds, depending on what tier pet you have. <clears throat> so we got like about four shamans here and then you just go through here. So I see people run through this group here as well, which I don't know why. If you can one skill them or just like whatever, just let you, just do it anyways. It's like a microsecond so your pets have something to pick up kill this here and then I normally kill this one group here before dropping down this cliff now at this cliff this is like the intersecting point between the two uh, grind spots if you're on the western side you just go west and then sometimes there'll be people who are actually in tune with like the two areas as well and this is the eastern spot so if there's nobody actually sort of doing this I sort of just like steal this one over um, but if somebody's there then I just leave it alone because because like you're just getting greedy because the time frames and the distance between one shaman to the other they're so far apart periodically that there's no point trying to be greedy you're just wasting your own time and also mob density kills on both rotations west and east that i've done the western rotation is short by about like one to i think it was like two to three shamans or something like that i didn't do a full count but i'll have it at the end of this video and at the same time the trash per hour was pretty much almost nearly identical. One was 7,600 or 7,800 depending on if I was playing more efficiently or worse. And the other side was like 8,000 to 8,200 sometimes. And that was it. No Agris Fever, all yellow scroll and that's it. Advanced loot scroll, that's it. No, I never used a blue loot scroll. It was always the advanced loot scroll and it kept it very consistent and the rotations were like practically run like I was like a freaking like replicating monster. Like I tried to keep every single skill and like clear kills and whatever as fast as possible all right so um I, I haven't really been describing the path that i'm going here so you go straight turn left at this one here um <clears throat> and then i normally kill this group as extra if i'm on this western rotation because i overkill this place a little bit and then i have to wait for shamans to respawn in, in the rotation it's another one here and then there's this group here and there's this group up here um generally you either pick one group or the other you always pick the left one because it's just more packed but your pets only tag five at a time and blow up this group just to pick up some extra loot this is the other shaman here and then we are back at the near the beginning of the rotation so and then it's just a bit of a distance to cover this is why when you have like an extreme mobility class it's very nice here because these shamans are so far apart and we're back at the beginning of the rotation so right here so just go through that one more time just for reference um, there's also a little bit of extras that I'll mark as I'm going through it again. Uh, so this is the third one here. I've got a fourth one over here. And then if sometimes if you actually are killing really, really fast or you're on a class that blows up these things really fast, you can also make a slight detour here. There's one just hanging out over here. And then you can just go back, but it's like you have to double the distance though. So this is like an extra step and then you might want to ignore a group or two here. I normally don't grab that shaman there because I don't think it's worth it. It's way out of the way and it just sort of slows everything else down. Uh, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> you go through here, drop down. Generally if there's somebody else occupying that side, I know that the shaman just dies because the time frame is pretty much the same in their rotation over there. This is what I mean by like I tried literally tried to like greed kill like the whole place it just doesn't work it's either like you're gonna cause conflict with somebody else and then they're more like more than likely gonna flag on you or i'm gonna flag on them i don't really know i didn't actually really flag on anybody except for like two people while i was doing this um most of the time i just wondered why everybody was running around in the middle of the map intersecting like both areas without even clearing all the shamans out when the kill count was almost practically the same like 16 to 20 essentially from each side and going through the middle was like only like 17 to 18 and i was like there's no difference other than that you lose a lot of mobs in between but i mean if that's what you want to do go right ahead i'm just explaining what i did and uh i thought it to be very very effective and uh it was pretty pretty consistent pretty much so that's what that's what this rotation turned into And as you can see, I'm reaching like the full rotation and these mobs haven't even respawned yet. So this is why like there's like small little extensions of like other groups and like the kill time respawn is pretty long. 
Uh, it's about like 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So essentially, if there's only a population of 38 shamans here, if you eliminate all 38 within 2 minutes and 30 seconds, congratulations, you're in a really fast class. It was very unlikely, even like Musa Mewa is like probably somewhere around only in the 30s and you won't be able to clear out all of them. There's only a few classes that like can ex reach that exception of like very high uh, shaman kill rate and then you're also ignoring all the other groups here. Okay, so that's pretty much the rotation as you can see. It's pretty much just timed um, nearly perfectly where the shamans are coming back up as I reach them. Um, even with like small delays and small detours and that's that's it. Um, the other rotation is the west is the eastern rotation. You preferably want to be in the eastern rotation as it possesses a few more extra shamans that drop the piece for you. Uh, so right at the tree here at the intersection between west and east, uh, on the eastern section, we just start here at this one right here. I'd normally jump into this huge group. I normally don't kill all the mobs here because one of the problems that existed was that if you kill all the mobs with a huge AoE, your pets like only pick up like the first five and then you sort of have to stand around for two seconds or you pick it up manually yourself before moving on. So if you want to do that, or either that you can Z buff in a huge group. If you Z buff in a huge group, it'll give your pets enough time to pick up an extra, like all the other trash loot. So from that group, you run up the road here, just the straight road. I've seen other people just run straight for that group, which I don't know why they ignore this shaman here if that's what's important to them. Because they go over to that one, that other group over there later. So they just completely ignored the shaman for I don't know why. They're just causing more travel distance from one shaman to the other. And then uh, you blow up this shaman here, make that make that left turn, and then you just go into this group if you want. Just blow them up and give your pet something to pick up. And then kill this shaman. Then you have to run all the way back in. You can make a t turn right here. I normally run in where these three mansion warriors are, and then you can either blow up this group on the left to give your pet something to pick up, or if you don't kill fast enough, just skip it and then just jump into this shaman straight ahead. And then in front of this shaman that I just killed, there's another one straight ahead over here. And then most of the time, like, there's... And then most people don't come here. I don't know why. This is literally probably where the most amount of shaman's density is. I killed these four over here just for my pets to give something. There's two shamans here back to back. And I think this is the only spot where there's two shamans back to back. And then I think most people get lost as to where to go here. But you actually just go into this group over here. You can blow this one up for, like, extra loot or just for your pets or something to do. There's a shaman at the bottom here. And then afterwards, you might want to jump into that group, but you actually make a sharp right turn here, run up these yellow flowers, and there's another shaman over here. <clears throat> and then you run forward, there's another shaman over here. Just run ahead around this tree stump, circle around you, skip that small group there, because you'll be wasting time. You can kill these five if you want, might be wasting time as well. But And then there's a shaman here, I'm going to blow this mob up, and then this is normally where I just Z buff. And then you just jump in here, blow up this shaman, <clears throat> and then you go to this one over here, blow up this shaman, this is where you have to just go in a straight line and back, so you kill this shaman, and then turn around, go straight back, run up this hill, blow up this group here just for your pets to pick up something, quickly blow up this group over here so your pets can pick up something as you're running through, blow up a mob here, and then there's another shaman up on the top of this cliff here. Then you run back down, and then there's another shaman in this huge group over here. And then afterwards, you just <coughs> run around the corner of this tree, another shaman over here. There's a small group here just for picking up stuff, so that you have an in-between, or you could just skip it and go straight to this shaman here. And we're approaching the restart of the rotation, and this is where the beginning is. So this is pretty much where the beginning is, and that's the big tree between the intersecting uh, two rotations, and the shaman should be back up. So if you're very vigilant and quick on that rotation, uh, you'll notice that you should be coming up to like your shamans like respawning almost like one to two seconds in or something like that. You can of course deviate from this, but I couldn't really find any other better like rotations. And most of the time when people were running around the middle, they're just completely confused. I see them just running around like zigzags, just trying to kill shamans however they want. And then like they're just walking around. And then sometimes I just literally like stood in a bush somewhere near a shaman spawn point and I just observed them, right? <laughs> like, like watching somebody going like, okay, what's this dude doing? Am I actually in his rotation? Did I invade something? So I just like queued and then I just like went prone and just stared and was like, I was like, what the hell? I'm like, this dude's like, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. He's just running all over the place. And then the shaman respawns and I'm just waiting to see how long it takes for him to get there. And he spends like another 40 seconds before he arrives at the damn thing. And I'm like, what the fuck rotation is he doing? So, 
<laughs> hope this helped you out. Uh, obviously, this is the most troublesome one out of all three for the mana potion, but yeah, I hope this helps you out. But those are the two rotations I found that existed. There might be some that exist as well, but I didn't research anything further, and I found that like a kill count of like 18 to 20 uh, every two minutes is essentially about 600 kills an hour. It's a very low roll uh, for compared to any of the other pieces that exist. All right. The last piece is um, at uh, Navarn Step. It's just gathering the Ferricas and the Belladonna Elephants. They all have a chance to drop it. Um, there's not really much to go about it. Obviously, it's just the two kinds of mobs that drop it. I don't really know if gathering mastery uh, affects the chance for it to appear. I believe it does, by my own opinion, but I don't have any tangible proof that that actually helps or not, considering it's just an RNG item. Um, others uh, agree that it does help, and others also say it's just RNG, it doesn't affect it at all, because it's an extremely rare item, but who knows. Uh, all I know is that if you're gathering it, and you're not really much of a life skiller and you're seeking the item, uh, there's an item called Late's uh, Tanning Knife. You can you can rent it out for 50 CP if you're not a if you're just a grinder and not a life skiller. Um, for those who are using magic tools, if you believe mastery does work, uh, you probably want to be at about like these, like, well, 600 plus mastery or so to overwhelm like magic tools. But even then, at 600 mastery, you're kind of just like equivalent to a magic tool. You're not really like that much better than a magic tool. It's just slightly better. Um, if you can get over like 800 mastery, then I would consider not using magic tools anymore. I'd probably just use the late tanning knife. Um, but if you're a sub 600, just use magic tools and just smack it and pray. And that's pretty much it. Um, there's not too much else I want to go over about that one. That one's very straightforward. You just gather. Um, the other uh, additional details I want to add into event times if they ever throw in the alternative drops. Again, um, alternative drops for MP pots. Um, honestly, Shira is very, very dense. That's the best spot for it. Alternative drops for Manchons with us was the Feather Wolves. It is completely stupid because there's only four population for the f for the targeted Feather Wolf that actually drops the piece, which is the Finnel, the Black Wolf. And there's like four in a rotation and three on the other side. It's just stupid. You're much better off doing the Manchons by kill count because the drop chances I'm pretty sure are the same. Or you just get RNG carried and do a walk by and then suddenly kill a mob and it drops it for you. So... <laughs> yeah everything's up in the air um that one's pretty stupid and then for the gathering piece for Navarn step it turns into hunting mobs under the comma sylvian tag or the dragon tag is where they sp that can have the chance to drop only when the event is active without the event uh these details mean nothing um that's pretty much it for this video uh thanks so much for watching and good luck on your grinds peace